Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Sanch, your host here on the Bodybuilding News Network. Welcome back to another installment, morning installment of Bodybuilding Daily, where we talk about all things hot topic and trending in the world of bodybuilding and sometimes fitness. If you are new here and by the end of the video, you find yourself enjoying this style of content, my style of content, definitely consider subscribing. But let's go ahead and start off with none other than Mr. Seabum, Chris Bumstead. And this is some behind the scenes footage that he shared uh, specifically with his coach, uh, Hani Rambod, at the most recent 2023 Mr. Olympia, uh, where he did win the classic physique title again, 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 uh, for the four time. So such a such a nice physique, and I was really impressed by this footage. I know his uh, brother-in-law, Ian Valier, mentioned the amazing blue lighting in the backstage area, uh, specifically near this pro tan uh, tanning booth. And uh, I, I wanted to share it with you. I wanted to find it, take a look at it. I, uh, I And it did not surprise me. It did not uh, leave me without doubt to think that uh, Chris Bumstead is going to continue to dominate the men's classic physique division for, you know, possibly for years to come. If you remember his victory speech, he did state that, you know, he's not going anywhere. He dispelled the rumors of him potentially uh, retiring early. So uh, keep that in mind moving forward into this 2023 competitive calendar. I know a lot of people are saying, uh, you know, Ramon Dino is the next classic physique Olympia champion. Uh, and I, I don't particularly uh, particularly disagree with that. I would just wonder and question the timeline of that prediction. It could be another five years before Chris Bumstead uh, f- has any chinks in his armor. I mean, the dude tore his freaking bicep and he still won. So keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, a, a future classic physique. I don't think he's done his classic debut yet, but top men's physique Olympian and U.S. Army Olympian, four-time Olympian, actually. Jeremy uh, Potvin is sharing a interesting last name, of course. Uh, I used to always pronounce it wrong, but now I actually read it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that is definitely not what I used to call it. Uh, sharing some physique updates in the off-season, looking phenomenal. And, you know, this is one of those guys that just has such a crazy taper, such a crazy physique. And the, the pec muscles are so overdeveloped, not over, I don't, over is bad. You know, usually you're insinuating some sort of problem, but his chest is so well developed that, I mean, the, the chest, it, it just hangs there until he flexes it. So uh, I, I'm excited to see how he compares, how he lines up in the very dense and thick competition that is the pro men's physique category, the, the division. And uh, coming from men's physique, he has a lot of pros and some cons. And we'll talk about that in a second. But he has a lot of pros coming into the men's classic physique division. Uh, He's good about transitions is a huge one. I think a lot of people don't talk about men's physique guys. The way they transition from shot to shot is is, uh, very artistic, masterful. So you got to keep that in mind. Even right here, you can see that this is one of his men's physique shots. If he could find a way to incorporate this into classic, I think that'd be fun to see. Um, but another thing is the taper. The uh, the focus of men's physique is the upper body, and you can see the legs here. Now, uh, he has a great upper body, The I think pretty developed for the most part. He's not really lacking anything, but this is where he has the con is the, the con. That sounds bad. This is where he has, you know, pros versus cons, the legs need to come up to match the upper body. He is very, very well uh, endowed, I guess you could say, in the upper body, the the chest, the the arms, the small tapered midsection. The crazy flaring lats is what usually gets me, really catches my eye. He's built perfectly for men's physique. And the question for me and the question for you, ladies and gentlemen, please let me know down below, is your thoughts on Jeremy you know, also Jeremy Buendia, you know, both of these Jeremy's are coming into the men's classic physique potentially this year. And the, the real question is, how well are they going to do? Uh, and even quickly, I'll plug my good friend, uh, Eddie Lusk. The third is another men's uh, physique pro that is converting to classic physique, 
uh, to classic physique this year. Uh, and even um, what's the guy? He plays like top four in men's physique this year. Um, uh, he's, got, he's got dreads. That's all I can remember from him. Um, I'd say short guy, but most men's physique guys are short. Uh, he's also going into the uh, the men's classic physique. So lots of conversions, lots of people moving up in divisions. Not a lot of people, you know, you remember when Keon was like going back to, to, to classic, you know, not a lot of guys going from 212 to classic or classic to men's physique. Um, so I, I'm happy to see it, you know, adding new talent to the lineups is always something that I like to see. Next up, we have William Martins and this guy. Um, for me, at least his breakout season was last year. Uh, he did that, um, uh, Puerto Rico pro and he did that nutty side chest shot that really just blew everyone away. And he's doing it right now in this shot and we'll get a, a quicker or closer up shot in the next transition of the, the footage for you. Um, I love my format. I'm, I'm just going to plug it. Uh, I, I try to get the content ahead of time and then I can go through my notes and just kind of make the structured video kind of flow very naturally. And it's fun. It feels like I'm genuinely talking with you guys, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking with you. So it's fun. And I hope you guys, uh, you ladies and gentlemen, do enjoy the style that Bodybuilding Daily has uh, evolved into and continues to evolve in. But William Martins, one of these guys, I thought he got overlooked at the Tsunami Pro or Tsunami Nutrition Cup, however you want to call it. Most people just say the Tsunami Pro. Um, I thought he got overlooked a little bit. I know that James Hollingshead did come away. Hollingshead? Hollingshead? I think I said it right the first time. Uh, he did walk away with the win. Um, I thought Willie Martins could have got a better look, but you know you can see clearly here. His issue is the midsection. Uh, he's got somewhat higher lat insertions for his height. Uh, great structure, great um, thickness of muscle, but uh, what really hinders him is the midsection uh, really doesn't match up to to everything else. It's just a little bit too, um, it's just a little bit too wide. And and uh, Martin, if you're watching, I'd love to hear your your strategy coming into the 2023 competitive calendar. You know what? God, look at that lat spread. That's wild. Um, I'd love to hear his thoughts on you know what, uh, you know what he has planned to to correct those things. You know, some people take a year off, wear nothing but a waist trainer. I know uh, rule one has like a little waist trainer thing that they sell super affordable too. Um, I'll probably, uh, uh, you know, if they don't send it to me for free, I'll probably order it. But um, just a thought, you know, I'd love to see what, what his strategy is to, to bring in the midsection just a little bit. This is his current uh, physique update. I believe it was 330 pounds, which is wild to think. Uh, but he is a, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Brazilian, right? He's a Brazilian fellow. So the, there's definitely going to be some possibility for him to come into the Arnold Brazil it would be a, a great show for him to do. And that's just a few weeks after the Arnold Ohio. So keep your eyes out for that. I believe that is in April is when that show is. So just after the March Ohio Arnold classic, the Arnold USA. Um, that's my thought. I'd love to see him there. I know Raf Brandeo is definitely not in uh, shape to do that show. So hopefully Williams can hop into that and maybe get a quick qualification. And quickly, I wanted to highlight Akeem Williams continuing to impress me and I'm sure the rest of the bodybuilding fandom with these super impressive physique updates. Uh, I don't remember the last time I've seen Akeem come in this level of conditioning. Uh, he usually comes in okay, but his signature, his um, calling card, if you will, is the size. It's the proportions. So for him to come into this Arnold Classic four weeks out right now, ladies and gentlemen, to come into this Arnold Classic with this level of detail already, you can see the, the, the striations in the lower back and you can even see it in the glutes, the, the deep separation, the quads. I'm very excited to see um, how he does. And next up, we have the current second place runner up at the Miss Figure 2022 Olympia, uh, none other than Jessica Reyes Padilla, uh, sharing some physique updates. And uh, as we look at her Olympia finish here, such an amazing physique, such a beautiful 
flow to the, the, the physique. The way she's put together, I think, is perfect. And that's exactly why she got second this year. I'm not sure. I didn't look at the Arnold Classic lineup to see if she was doing it. Uh, but, you know, looking at her most recent content, uh, it is hard to say. It looks like she's in the off season. So I'm um, not sure when we'll get to see her again, but I'm sure we'll see her in the near future. Or maybe she takes the year off and gets ready for the Olympia in 2023. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching another episode of Bodybuilding Daily here on the Bodybuilding News Network. I'm your host, Josh Sanch. As always, thank you for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comment sections below on content and ideas you want to see next here on BNN. Subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.